found this great open source program. It's called Evolution FEA. It's an FEA analysis program. And I'm going to um, take us through exporting STL file and importing that into the FEA analysis program. It's also so I can remember how, how I did that. I'm using a program called Geomagic Design. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got an assembly and what I'm going to do is I'm going to import that assembly. I've got to change it to a part so I can save it as an STL file. So what I'm doing, um, I am doing, doing a Boolean Unite um, on, on this assembly. And I'm, so I'm taking this assembly um, and effectively changing it into a part. And that's what I'm doing here because it tends to import a little bit better. So here I'm exporting this. Go to File Export. A few important things to do right here when you're exporting a STL file. One thing to do is just to make sure that we export this file in millimeters because that's the units that the program accepts. And also we're going to make sure that the file format is an ASCII format and not the binary format because binary format just won't import the, the uh, STL file into Evolution FEA. So I'm going to export this, and now that I've got it exported, I'm done with my CAD group program. So now I'm going to go to the Evolution FEA software, open that, and I've got to import the file. I've got to do that for my file explorer. Um, and one thing is that you have to put your STL file on on the C drive or on your hard hard drive because if you try to do it from a network drive it's not going to mesh for you correctly. It's not, not going to import it correctly. I'm not sure why, but it took me a while to figure out what it was doing wrong. All right, and there's my STL file. You can see what happened is I just uh, drugged that STL file, dropped it on the white space, the F Evolution FEA software, and it just took a second and it, uh, it comes right up. All right, the first thing I'm going to do with this part is mesh it or turn it into wireframe. So I'm going to meshing, tetrahedral mesh. I'm going to do a very fine mesh on this one. And uh, that'll take a, take a second. Um, that's going through. You might have to play around, do a moderate mesh or fine mesh, a coarse mesh. Some some parts work the first time. Some of them you have to play around with a little bit. While this is going through, I'll tell you the one one of the ways that I found uh, to to go through all this is it really helps to go through the tu tutorials, the PDF tutorials that they supply with the software when you install it. It uh, just dropped the it dro automatically drops those PDF files in the directory um, of Evolution FEA, so you can go through those and it'll show you step by step with some different examples of how to go through set it up in different ways. All right, and so it meshed it. Now I'm going to press OK, and it'll take a second to show up. And there it is. There's my mesh or wireframe part. So from there, the next thing I've got to do is I've got to constrain um, constrain this part to, to set up where it's where it's going to be held and uh, before that I've got to set up the material make sure it's the Young's modulus is set up in there it does that automatically for steel it's all metric units everything is so boundary conditions I'm gonna just simply loaded beam um, do this as a simply loaded beam so I'm gonna constrain the the uh, the Z and the Y there I guess it is um, just because that's that's the way I want to calculate this one and so I'm going to click on these nodes individually you can select a few um, I'm selecting two on each end um, just to kind of give it a few few points there since this isn't a very fine mesh it's just kind of a rough calculation next I'm gonna actually put my forces in so I'm gonna put a force right in the middle on the top side you notice that X, XYZ coordinate system at the bottom left hand of the screen use that a lot to be able to to see which um, see which directions your forces and that kind of thing are going on alright so I'm gonna zoom in zoom in tool I'm gonna to select about four nodes I know that I want to do 500 pounds so um, that's about 2224 newtons so that divided by four gives me about 556 newtons. So that's what I'm going to put going down in the Z direction just to, to do my, my estimate here. And so I'm going to press OK. 
you can see the arrows that's uh, that's divided that force between those four nodes that's one force going to those four nodes that should total out to around 2,000 newtons or about 500 pounds analysis I'm gonna that that second solver is seems to be a good one it works pretty well so you might have to try some different ones and it and it worked out and so next I get to see my results oh no I haven't done it yet there it is um, so it's going to go through may take a second depending on how how fine your mesh is and it works out results are being processed and it says it's uh, calculating the displacements calculating the stresses so it found all the stresses and dis displacements now I'm going to go to take a look at my results displacements first and there is the distorted view and um, I'm going to click on the, the Z direction so I can uh, tell by the color code it's going around it's it's uh, showing me all this is in millimeters so it's showing me it's deflecting about nine millimeter if, if, if I'm understanding that right about nine millimeters and I'm playing with the scale here the, the um, I'm, that's a one-to-one -one scale what it actually looks like if it was uh, if it was lo the loaded beam and uh, let's see next I'm gonna take a look at the stresses that does Von misses stresses automatically and it shows you got the stresses there the, these uh, the stress stresses that it shows are in um, megapascals I believe if that's correct um, so it's showing this this is a little bit overloaded there you can see that it's it's not quite to the yield point which is about 200 megapascals but it's about 100 so that's usually a little bit more than you would do a beam I guess it, uh, it showed me where the where the high stresses are and you can play around with the with the color scales also if you want to using the buttons at the top and yeah like I said if you go through the tutorial it'll show you all the specific buttons that you use and that's it please uh, please contribute uh, if this video helps you out this will help me build some of these parts <laughs> that I'm trying to build uh, thank you very much